Chapter 30 And thou shalt make an altar to burn incense upon. Of shittim wood shalt thou make it. A cubit shall be the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof. Four square shall it be, and two cubits shall be the height thereof. The horns thereof shall be of the same. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, the top thereof, and the sides thereof round about, and the horns thereof. And thou shalt make unto it a crown of gold round about. And two golden rings shalt thou make to it under the crown of it, by the two corners thereof. Upon the two sides of it shalt thou make it. And they shall be for places for the staves to bear it withal. And thou shalt make the staves of shittim wood, and overlay them with gold. And thou shalt put it before the veil that is by the ark of the testimony, before the mercy seat that is over the testimony, where I will meet with thee. And Aaron shall burn thereon sweet incense every morning. When he dresseth the lamps, he shall burn incense upon it. And when Aaron lighteth the lamps at even, he shall burn incense upon it, a perpetual incense before the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall offer no strange incense thereon, nor burnt sacrifice, nor meat offering, neither shall ye pour drink offering thereon. And Aaron shall make an atonement upon the horns of it once in a year, with the blood of the sin offering of atonements. Once in the year shall he make atonement upon it throughout your generations. It is most holy unto the Lord. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, When thou takest the sum of the children of Israel after their number, then shall they give every man a ransom for his soul unto the Lord, when thou numberest them, that there be no plague among them, when thou numberest them. This they shall give, every one that passeth among them that are numbered, half a shekel after the shekel of the sanctuary. A shekel is twenty giras. And half shekel shall be the offering of the Lord. Every one that passeth among them that are numbered from twenty years old and above shall give an offering unto the Lord. The rich shall not give more, and the poor shall not give less than half a shekel, when they give an offering unto the Lord to make an atonement for your souls. And thou shalt take the atonement money of the children of Israel, and shalt appoint it for the service of the tabernacle of the congregation, that it may be a memorial unto the children of Israel before the Lord to make an atonement for your souls. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Thou shalt also make a laver of brass, and his foot also of brass, to wash withal. And thou shalt put it between the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, and thou shalt put water therein. For Aaron and his son shall wash their hands and their feet thereat. When they go into the tabernacle of the congregation, they shall wash with water that they die not. Or when they come near to the altar to minister, to burn offering made by fire unto the Lord, so they shall wash their hands and their feet that they die not and it shall be a statute for ever to them, even to him and to his seed throughout their generations. Moreover the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take thou also unto thee principal spices, of pure myrrh five hundred shekels, and of sweet cinnamon half so much, even two hundred and fifty shekels, and of sweet calamus two hundred and fifty shekels, and of cassia five hundred shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, and of oil, olive, and hin. And thou shalt make it an oil of holy ointment, an ointment compound after the art of the apothecary. It shall be an holy anointing oil. And thou shalt anoint the tabernacle of the congregation therewith, and the ark of the testimony, and the table, and all his vessels, and the candlestick, and his vessels, and the altar of incense, and the altar of burnt offering, with all his vessels, and the laver, and his foot. And thou shalt sanctify them, that they may be most holy. Whatsoever toucheth them shall be holy. And thou shalt anoint Aaron and his sons, and consecrate them, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, This shall be an holy anointing oil unto me throughout your generations. Upon man's flesh shall it not be poured, neither shall ye make any other like it after the composition of it. It is holy, and it shall be holy unto you. Whosoever compoundeth any like it, or whosoever putteth any of it upon a stranger, shall even be cut off from his people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take unto thee sweet spices, Stacte, and Onica, and Galbanum, these sweet spices with pure frankincense, of each shall there be a like weight. And thou shalt make it a perfume, a confection after the art of the apothecary, tempered together, pure and holy. And thou shalt beat some of it very small, and put of it before the testimony in the tabernacle of the congregation, where I will meet with thee. It shall be unto you most holy. And as for the perfume which thou shalt make, ye shall not make to yourselves according to the composition thereof. It shall be unto thee holy for the Lord. Whosoever shall make like unto that to smell thereto 
shall even be cut off from his people. Chapter 4 I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, When he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive, and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who, being past feeling, have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness, but ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, Speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry, and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you, with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Father in heaven, we come asking that you will cleanse us again from sin and self. Make room within us for the working of your Holy Spirit upon our hearts, and help us, dear Lord, to live a life wholly consecrated to you. Thank you, dear Lord, for reminding us, for reminding us in your word of the value of work to keep us from dishonesty and from stealing. Help us, dear Lord, to avoid the idleness which leads to stealing and help someone with a stealing habit to overcome and to use their energies to labor and to work. For in your fourth commandment, dear Lord, you said, six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. So help, dear Lord, that someone will find a good job today 
and even if it means working with their hands, perhaps planting, farming, or carpentry, or whatever, they would find something, some work, so that they could labor honestly and don't have to steal other people's produce or their property or their equipment to sell, but help that they would be honest. We pray the Lord number two that you will help us to avoid the anger that leads to sin, that leads to quarrelings and fretting and abusings and sometimes even to fights and sometimes even to murder. Help us to heed your counsel, Lord, to don't let the sun go down on our wrath. Because by doing so, we give place to Satan and he tries to, to cause us to exhibit more and more of his attributes until we become like him, who from the beginning is a murderer and a liar. So Father, give someone victory over an evil temper and help them, Lord, not to hug it as if it is something good. Lord, sometimes we like to say, well, there's me and I just talk and this or I just talk. But help us, dear Lord, not to give place to Satan by saying that, but to see the anger problem as a fruit of Satan's attributes and not one of the fruit of the Spirit. For the fruit of the Spirit is love, then joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and self-control. So help dear Lord that our speech will testify that we are Christians. Give us victory over lying. Help us to speak honestly. Give us victory over corrupt communication and evil speaking, like gossiping and talking ill or the bad things about people. Help us, dear Lord, to find good things to talk about people. For when all is said and done, Lord, except for Jesus, there can't be anything good in any of us. So help us, dear Lord, to speak well of others. And help, dear Lord, that our speech will testify that we are converted. Help us to speak gently and let our speech educate in a positive way. Father, help us not to grieve your Holy Spirit away when he comes to us and pleads with us to give our lives to Jesus Christ and to live a better way. You said we should not grieve the Holy Spirit away, for through him we are sealed for salvation. Help us, dear God, not to be like King Saul, who refused to be instructed and corrected by you until he committed suicide and died a lost soul. Help us not to be like Ephraim, who would not let go of idols, until you had to say, Ephraim is joined to his idols, let him alone. Dear God, so help us to respond in a positive way and say, yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. Yes, Lord, yes. I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree, and my answer will be yes. Lord, yes. And Father, help us to treat others the way you treat us. Help us to be loving and forgiving. Help us to be respectful of others. Help us, dear God, to love one another. And Father, today we are lifting up this person before you, seems to be someone who is soon to graduate from university or has just graduated and this person lord is looking for an internship they are looking at internship sites to start working i pray the lord that they would find a good site where they can learn and where they can have a good supervisor who can guide them through the internship process somebody lord who will be a good supervisor gentle and who will do their work diligently and not put pressure, undue pressure on the student who is learning. We pray the Lord that you would give them favor in this search so that they can find a site that pays during the internship so that this person could have help to offset their bills. Father, you promised guidance. You said in Psalm 32, 8, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eyes. So guide this person, Lord. They would click on the right site, or perhaps they would meet someone on the road at a shop in a supermarket who will be the exact person to assist them along the way. So help this person, Lord, who is looking for an internship site to start working, that they will find a good site. Help they would find, help that they would find a knowledgeable and excellent and a Christian supervisor 
who will guide them through the internship process and help their Lord that they would find an internship organization or site that will pay during the internship so that this person will have money to take care of their bills. And Father, remember all of the other requests that were placed before. We pray that you will fulfill each one and we want to give you the honor, the glory, and the praise in advance. Thank you for being with that young man who buried his wife recently. We pray the Lord that you will strengthen him. Thank you for being with him and his his family and his siblings and his mother. We pray the Lord that he will continue to serve you. And right there on the East Bank, he will testify of your goodness that he had some good years with this woman who bore him children. So take charge, Lord, and when you come the second time, may we have the joy of seeing you face to face as our Lord and Savior. And whatever else we did not pray for today, please grant, as you perceive we have need of. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.